Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We have another Transformers review coming your way. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series number 76 Thrust. And this is Thrust as we saw him from the 2018 Transformers Bumblebee movie. So as we always do, let's go ahead and take a look at that packaging. And we'll start right here. You've got that nice CGI artwork of Thrust, number 76, Studio Series, Bumblebee movie, Transformers up the side. You've got that CGI artwork on the side right there, which looks pretty darn cool. Back here on the back, you have your product shots with big screen inspired, Cybertron Falls, and 30 Steps. And down here, Thrust and the Seekers blast the Autobot launch pad with missile fire to stop their escape from Cybertron. The backdrop is included, and you have all your warnings down here, and you do get little Seeker baby, so don't make him angry. And number 76, close up of his face on this side, he is a Voyager class. And Transformers Bumblebee right there. And on the bottom, you have your manufacturing information. So that's it for the outside packaging. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what came inside that box. And here's everything that came inside that package. And we'll start, as we always do, right here with your little sheet of warnings. And you also get the instructions. And then as far as accessories go, you do get two null rays and a hand cannon. So we'll start with those null rays on the left. Now, for those of you who have the Studio Series Bumblebee Starscream, this is all going to look very, very familiar to you, including these null rays. Uh, they are the same bland, lame, cheap looking null rays that we got with Starscream. The, these are frankly some really disappointing accessories, but uh, there they are. So you have the black molded plastic and you do have some detail in there. And that's really about all you can say about these things. And then they peg into his wings on those pegs right there. And in my copy, they do it very poorly. So you do get two of those. They are, I say they're exactly the same, but they're mirrors of each other. So uh, you, as you can tell by that, that tab right there, they're, they're just mirrored. But other than that, they're the same thing. And then for this hand cannon. So again, this will look very familiar for those of you who have Starscream. Uh, it's the same thing, just molded in a different color. Now, as far as it goes, though, I kind of like this accessory. I liked it with Starscream. I like it with Thrust. I think it's got a good amount of detail on there, and it looks, I don't know, I think it looks pretty cool when he's holding it. Other than it just has a little bit of a lean to it, and we'll see that when he gets into robot mode. It just looks like he's holding it down like that. It just looks Something just looks a little bit off with that. All right. Now, that is everything that came in the box except for the display base and thrust himself and as i've said before with all the other studio series i really like the display bases i appreciate that they include those and the the backdrop on this display base is cybertron which of course is where we saw thrust in the the bumblebee movie um so really cool that they include these i just don't have anywhere to put them so this is going to be put back in the box and the box is going to go in storage but if you have room to put him on this then by all means feel free to do so i think they look pretty cool all right, so that's everything that came inside the box, except for Thrust himself. So now what we'll do is we'll bring him in for his close-up and take a look at those details and articulation. And here he is, one of the Cybertronian mode conehead seekers, Mr. Thrust. And uh, before we bring him in for his details and articulation, just want to say real quickly that this guy is very much a case of copy and paste. So for those of you who have the Studio Series Starscream, everything is the same except for the head sculpt and then this cone, the cone head part. Um, so as far as the details, articulation, transformation, all that is, it is exactly the same as that studio series star scream. And even when we bring him in for that close up, that head, that is Blitzwing's head. So he is a, he's a copy and paste job all the way across where the only original thing, uh, for this mold, uh, is this cone right here. All that being said, I still like this mold. I still think it's a cool transformation. I still enjoy the way these figures look, but much like Seekers are, this is a copy and paste job from Starscream. So that being said, let's go ahead and bring him in and take a look at those details. And we'll start up there with that head sculpt. And like I said, this is Blitzwing. And uh, it looks good. I like it. You know, I've, I've got nothing bad to say about it other than, you know, it's just a copy and paste head. And the cone is, 
it's kind of cool. I, I like the look of this thing. So I've, I've got no real complaints as far as that goes. Uh, it was an interesting way for them to do the cone heads. So yeah, no problem there. And coming down, looking at this detail, all the same stuff we saw with Starscream. And coming down here to the crotch area, good amount of detail. I would have liked to have seen a paint app or something going on there, maybe to break up some of the monotony. But, you know, down here you do get the silver, and I think that looks good. And just like the Starscream mold itself, I mean, this thing is loaded with detail, and I think it just looks... I love the look of this mold. It, you know, there's there's no denying that. I think he looks great. So, he's just, uh, he's just Starscream. So, details on the inside of the legs. And then coming down here to those landing light toes. And over here on the side... Again, like a, just like with Starscream, really cool use of the thruster right there. So you could definitely do some imaginary play where you could see this guy taking off and using those thrusters. And coming up here to the hands and the arms. Looks great. And good detail, good paint apps on the inside of that arm right there. Now, he does have a filled-in area right here, which is great. Uh, on those legs, they went for the same thing, so hopefully that's coming through. So they've done what they can on this mold to minimize the hollow areas, and that is very much appreciated. And looking up underneath here, pretty decent amount of detail. And I like what they've done here with, with these wings. So, so even with the, with the wings, when you expand them out, you know, you have something to look at under there. So that's nice to see as well. Good detail on those intakes. And then up here on his collar, whatever they are. And coming around to the back. Whole lot of jet back here, but it looks good. Nice Decepticon symbols. No hollow areas to speak of. And then decent amount of detail in that area. Now this is just his the uh, his top fin, his tail fin when he was when he's in his jet mode. And again, just like Starscream, it just happens to be on one side just due to the asymmetrical transformation between these two legs. Transformation is the same. This one's just slightly different because of that tail fin. All right, so that is it as far as the details go. So what we can do now is talk about the articulation and I'm gonna say it a lot in this review, but just like the Starscream, he has the exact same articulation, but he is hindered a little bit in that head because of the cone. So let's take a look at that. And as far as that head goes, you know, you, you can get a little bit of movement on it, a little bit of up and down, maybe a tick side to side, and then you can turn his head just a little bit before he starts running into his cone. So he is kind of limited there, uh, not enough to really make it detrimental. I mean, you can still get some good poses out of this guy, but the cone is going to hinder your ability to pose that head. Now, as far as the arms go, you can take the arms straight out that far and minding the wing, you can go all the way around at the shoulder. And then you do have bicep rotation right there. And elbow bend, you get a nice generous elbow bend just on that single joint. So job well done there. So nice deep elbow bend. The only thing you get at the hands is this tilt in for transformation, but you can take advantage of that if you want to. And if you want to give him like a limp fish handshake kind of thing, like that, you can you can do that, and that, sorry, that tickles me. Uh, no wrist rotation. You do, however, have waist rotation. You just need to get this crotch piece and make sure that that's pulled out. And then you do have, right down here, you have that ability to turn your waist a few degrees either direction, enough to get you a nice pose. And then down here at the hips, straighten that waist out, you can get a good split out of this guy. You're not gonna get a full Van Dam out of him, but you're gonna get a good split. And these are not on ball joints. These are on soft ratchets, which is nice. So job well done on that as far as design choices. And kicking forward, he'll kick forward that far. And he'll kick backward if you get around the wing about that far. So not much of a back kick. Would have been nice if we could have gotten a little bit more out of that, but it's enough to get some poses. Now he does have thigh rotation, so you can go almost all the way around. You can see he's hitting up here, and then when you get him about right there, he's hitting on the backside. So you're not gonna be limited as far as what you can do for posing on that thigh. And then at the knee, you're gonna get just, just over 90. So it's not a deep knee bend, but it does a good job. Down here at the feet, 
you do get a little bit of down and a little bit of up and then you do get a pretty generous ankle tilt if you are tilting his ankle in that far for a pose you you've got a nice extreme yoga thing going on and i would be interested in seeing that so but yeah you can definitely give him a nice split like that no doubt about it so yeah as far as articulation goes other than that head and a little bit of a back kick issue i think he does pretty good so um uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to just jump right into his alt mode. We're not going to do a transformation in this video. If you want to see the step-by-step -step transformation for this guy, reference back to my Starscream video that I did, and I will have that link in the description. And I walk through the transformation to his alt mode and back to robot mode in that. But just for the purposes of saving a little bit of time here, since they're the exact same thing, no transformation in this video. So let's go ahead and magically make him become a crazy Cybertronian space jet and we'll take a look at him there. And boom, through the miracle of video editing, here we see Thrust in his alt mode with a flight stand, looking like he's ready to just swoop down and start taking out some Autobots or maybe shooting down that, uh, that launch site that we saw in the beginning of the Bumblebee movie. Now, the flight stand that I'm using, uh, just a couple quick caveats here. The flight stand that I'm using is actually from the Studio Series Soundwave, the uh, the satellite version of Soundwave. And this thing's not very strong. He's not meant for a, or he, it's not meant for a figure that's this heavy. So this joint right here, this is about the best angle that I can get out of this flight stand before he starts to either want to collapse forward or backwards. So I uh, just wanted to point out that he is three millimeter port flight stand compatible if you have one and you want to display these guys in their alt mode which if i had a better more robust flight stand for him i absolutely would i would keep starscream in his robot mode and this guy in his alt mode and and just have a blast setting these guys up so uh that's the first caveat the second caveat that i want to point out and just get out of the way right now i'm going to go ahead and take that flight stand off and i'm going to show you my other caveat is i oh you just saw it a uh, kind of a spoiler alert here I absolutely positively cannot stand these guns. They are too loose for these ports. They don't stay in, they fall out, they can't do anything with them. So if they come off, they come off. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take them off now because I hate them. I don't use that word often, but when I use it, I mean it. I hate those things. I'm really disappointed in those. That, that really sours me on this figure. The, the, the Star Screams are the same way, so it's not just thrust. These things suck. That being said, let's get into the details, the, the rest of the details on the figure. So we'll start up here on the cockpit. So as far as details and, and the colorization and everything on this guy, I think he looks great. I really do. I very much enjoy this mold. And you can see that little gun molded right there in the nose cone. Uh, I do have a question. This is a legitimate question that I don't understand. I've asked this in other reviews. So this is the Cybertronian mode. On Cybertron, they are completely autonomous, sovereign entities who control their own destiny. Why do they have human-sized cockpits on Cybertron? I don't understand that. Who on Cybertron is going to pilot a Decepticon Seeker? They're, they're piloting themselves. So I've never understood the premise of, of a Seeker mold or, you know, any of them. Sorry, I'm playing with this instead of talking. But I've, I've never understood the premise of... A, a cockpit on a Cybertronian mode or a or a driver's area, a human-sized driver's area on any vehicle for a Cybertronian mode. It's neither here nor there. It has nothing necessarily to do directly with thrust. It's just a question every time I see one of those. So if somebody out there knows, please feel free to leave a comment and let me, let me know. Educate me a little bit on that. So uh, as far as the rest of the details go, uh, you've got all kinds of molded in detail. And what I was playing with up here is this is just the little flap uh, where you close him up. So just showing this off real quick. So this is just one of your final transformation steps. And these kind of push in there. They're on little tabs and slots under there. And I kind of have to make a compromise with this guy. I don't know if it's a tolerancing issue or what, but I have to make a compromise with thrust of, do I have this completely closed where it's flush? Um, or do I leave a little bit of a gap? Because if I have it completely flush, then one of these pops up. So it's just a tolerance issue, not a major deal, just kind of an annoyance. All right, but the wings look great. I love the detailing and everything that they've done on the wings and the thrusters here. And one of the other things that I like, that I like is, yeah, the wings are swept down like that. But if you want to make him look like he's going really fast, you can do that as well. So uh, just kind of a 
point of comparison, regular look, and then swept back wing look. I think I like both of those. So good imaginary play there. You can do all kinds of stuff with these guys. Uh, I love the undercarriage. It, just like with the Starscream mold, this thing is funky. It's weird, and I love it. So here's his hand cannon uh, that integrates, and kind you kind of use this as a base to support him when you want to set him down in this mode. He does have a little bit of visible hand syndrome back here, but that's okay. Again, being a Cybertronian mode, he can do whatever the heck he wants to do. He's not hiding from anybody. And then back here, you do get a little peek of the thrust head back in there. So hello. And good detail all the way around on this guy. There he is from the top. And there he is from the bottom. So yeah, minus those guns. I really, really dig this figure. I, I uh, this mold in particular, Starscream and Thrust, this uh, Cybertronian Seeker mold. It's just cool and it's funky and I like it. I can't say enough good things about it, especially for the price point. Other than the fact that these stink. So, <laughs> that being said, uh, my rant is over. And what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we'll get into this, uh, some comparisons uh, in the alt mode here and see how he stacks up against some other figures. So I figured it would make sense to go ahead and start with that most relevant comparison. So this is the Studio Series Bumblebee Thrust next to the Studio Series Bumblebee Starscream. And as you can tell in this mode, other than the molded plastic color and the paint apps, there is virtually no difference between these two figures. So uh, they both look great. Um, and just like what we get with Seekers, I think, you know, those of us who are familiar with Seekers, we completely understand this. Starscream is the, the original and all the Seekers follow. So you're not going to see a lot of variety between a Thundercracker, a Skywarp, a Thrust, a Dirge, a Ramjet, any of those guys like that. I mean, they're all going to follow the same pattern as Starscream does. And uh, in this particular instance, what a great pattern it is. I really do very much enjoy these Cybertronian Tetra Jets from the Bumblebee movie. So but let's go ahead and give you a couple different angles on these guys. So you can see from the front and then we'll go ahead and line them up and kind of give you that nice angled look from the back. And you can see, again, there, there's no difference here. They look cool together, no doubt about it, but there, there's no no geometric difference between the two of these uh, vehicles and give them a little bit of a back view like that and you can see both of them are playing hide and seek with their heads hello fellas we see ya and I don't think we're gonna be able to fit like that but we can certainly fit like this and give you that kind of a view so I think they look Look pretty cool. I do very much enjoy these guys. And even on the underside, you don't have any differences whatsoever. All right. Ooh, they even look cool like that. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, I'm just distracting myself at this point. So there you are. There you have the Studio Series thrust next to the Studio Series Starscream. So let's go ahead and move on to the next comparison. And for our next comparison, here we see the Studio Series Thrust next to the Studio Series Blitzwing. So this is Blitzwing in his Earth mode when he rains fire from the sky on Bumblebee and rips his voice box out. Our next comparison is the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Thrust. Next up is the Decepticon Dreadwing as we saw him in the Transformers Prime series. And for our next comparison, here we see the original Starscream figure that came out for the 2007 Transformers Bayverse movie. And last but not least, I unfortunately do not have a G1 thrust in my collection, so this is going to be my G1 sub-in. This is the original G1 Aerial Bot Air Raid. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the bot mode accessories before we get into the bot mode comparisons. And here is Thrust with his accessories on, and there's not really a lot to talk about here, but we'll go through it real quickly. So for the null rays, uh, you can hook them on to the ports on his wings, which is about the only spot that you can put them, unless you want to put them in his hands, which they'll fit there. But 
Uh, th these are just so loose that I almost would just rather not have them on there at all. But that's entirely up to you. And then he does have his hand cannon. So just like what I had uh, mentioned earlier about it, there, there's a little bit of a droop. It just doesn't feel like he holds it straight. So if you straighten his arm out here, you can see what I'm talking about. It just looks like it's down just a, just a little bit. And it's because of that wrist, because of that transformation for that. So unfortunately, whenever you try to, or whenever I try to straighten it out, it actually pops it out of the hand. So just something to keep in mind that that may look a little bit off when you're posing him. But when he has it on like this and you get it angled right, I think it looks pretty good. Again, just like the Starscream mold. So they do a good job here of kind of integrating it and make it all look like it's uh, a one piece, you know, uh, organically transformed his hand turned into the cannon kind of thing. So, but yeah, that's it for the accessories. So let's go ahead and move on. So for our first robot mode comparison, here we see the Studio Series Thrust next to the Studio Series Bumblebee. And just like in their alt mode, there is physically no difference between these two figures except for the cone and the head sculpt. Um, they, they look brilliant. Love the way they look in the robot mode, but there's no physical difference between the two other than just the molded colors and the head and that cone. So let's go ahead and spin these guys around and take a look at a couple of different angles and we'll see what we've got going on here. So we'll put them kind of facing apart from each other like that. And then we'll just move them around to the back. And as you can tell, they're, like I said, there's no difference, but they look great from just about any angle. So let's go ahead and we'll just put them back to back. And then we'll do them face to face. And thrust is trying to be a little bit of a pain in posing right now. I just don't have his feet quite right. There you go. All right, so yeah, that is thrust with Starscream. So let's go ahead and move on to our next comparison. And our next comparison is the Studio Series Blitzwing as we saw him in the Bumblebee movie. And yeah, no doubt these two figures look great together. And you know, when you put all three of them together, Starscream and Blitzwing and thrust, just for mainline figures, they look terrific. Our next comparison is the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Thrust. Next up is Dreadwing, as we saw him in the Transformers Prime series. Our next comparison is the original Starscream figure that we got with the release of the 2007 Transformers movie. And last but not least, since I don't have a G1 Thrust, here is my G1 Aerial Bot Air Raid. All right, that's it for the robot mode comparison, so let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts. Yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about those final thoughts on the Studio Series number 76 thrust. This guy is definitely a mixed bag for me. Um, in short, I really like this mold. I, I think this mold looks good in both modes, and if you don't have the Studio Series Starscream, then I definitely recommend that you pick this guy up. Uh, I, I think he, uh, from a design and engineering standpoint, I think this figure really shines. That being said, this is very much the case of the Seeker copy and paste, and um, it, it hurts the value a little bit, you know, if you're somebody on a budget, uh, if you don't want to spend that kind of money. I mean, this is, uh, you know, depending on where you buy him from, uh, this could be, you know, a, a 26 to $30 uh, Voyager class figure. I myself picked this figure up at a local Walmart for $27. So um, just uh, be aware of that from a value standpoint. It really is a copy and paste. It's typical secret formula. So let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the bullets on this guy so we can quantify him a little bit. And we'll start with the aesthetics. Uh, as I mentioned, I absolutely love, for a mainline figure, I love the way this mold comes together. I, I like the way it looks in robot mode. I like the way it looks in that Cybertronian Tetrajet mode, which is just funky and cool and something different that we hadn't seen before, uh, the, the Studio Series Starscream. So really high marks 
for the overall aesthetics for this mold. My biggest complaint is just going to be, you know, for those uh, null rays th that they're not painted. They're just molded black plastic. And the, he does have, you know, those hollow areas behind his hands, which would have been nice if they could have filled those in. Uh, found a panel, some way to cover that up. But that's more of a wish list item. Uh, so overall for the aesthetics, I'm giving this guy a 9 out of 10 on that. And moving on to articulation, again, much like the Starscream mold, the articulation is there on this this figure. So uh, they've done a really good job with everything uh, for the overall design and engineering for this mold, up to and including the soft ratcheting hips instead of ball joints. Uh, I, I can't say enough about that, especially when a figure gets to be a certain size and a certain weight. Uh, it really makes me concerned about ball joint hips, so it's good to see that they've used the soft ratcheted joints for the hips on this figure. Um, as far as the downside, he does have limited head articulation because of that cone, so you're not going to be able to get that head moving around in too many dynamic poses the way you might have done with a Starscream, and he has that limited back kick as well, so you're not going to be able to get a lot of backwards motion, and he has no wrist rotation. He does have that wrist swivel, but there's no rotation there to speak of, and it's always welcome to see that wrist rotation, so for articulation, I'm giving this guy an 8 out of 10. Uh, on to accessories, this is where I'm really dinging this guy because, again, not only is he a copy and paste of Starscream, Starscream already came with a couple of really lame, really loose, overall stinky null rays. And they've just continued the trend here with Thrust. These null rays are horrible. They're, they're flat. They don't fit right. They're bland. They don't even go onto his shoulders the way that they should for Starscream or the Seekers. So all the way around... I, I would have almost rather them just not included them at all because they're they're a waste. I'm not a big fan of them. The hand cannon looks good, but he just holds it kind of funky like we talked about. It, it just feels like he's holding it a little limp-wristed uh, when he holds that gun. So for the accessories, I'm dinging this guy pretty hard. I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. I'm, I'm very disappointed in those null rays. Overall quality, um, for the most part, the overall quality is, is very good for this figure. Um, all the joints are tight. Uh, paint apps look good, no mold issues uh, or molding issues. Uh, he came with everything that he was supposed to come with, so no major issues there. But I'm hitting him again on those guns. Those, those null rays, they, they're loose. They, they're, there's a tolerance issue there. They don't fit properly, and uh, they, they really get on my nerves. I don't know if you can tell yet, but I'm not a fan of the null rays. Uh, and then also in his vehicle mode, those those last two little panels up on the upper the the top of the the Tetrajet mode, uh, like I said when we were looking at it in vehicle mode, either you get those to close all the way, and then you have a gap for the the tabs uh, for the other little pieces next to it, or you leave a gap for the those two little pieces that kind of clamshell together at the top. So not a main big issue there, but it is something to be aware of where they just seem to have a little bit of a tolerance issue there. Uh, so for overall quality, I'm giving this guy an 8 out of 10. Uh, I'm really, really dinging him because of those null rays. Those things are awful. So uh, our last bullet is overall value. Here's where, again, value is always subjective, but here's where it really hits it for me. Uh, if you already have the Studio Series Starscream and you like him and you are not a Seeker collector, you can probably skip this guy. If you missed out on the Studio Series Starscream, then I think this is a figure worthy of picking up. So it's really just a it's kind of a tale of, of two uh, options, if you will. Um, you know, if you have Starscream, you probably don't need this guy. If you don't have Starscream, then I recommend you pick him up. Um, it, he's a copy and paste of Starscream. So that's that's what you just need to expect going in. I mean, he is a seeker and that is the seeker formula. Is it's a copy and paste. So he has the body of Starscream with the head of Blitzwing. So not a lot of originality here, but overall it is a good mold and if you don't have it, then I recommend you put it in your collection. So for overall value, I am giving this guy a 7 out of 10. So that brings us to a total possible points out of 50. He gets 38 points out of a possible 50, which puts him right at 76%. A lot of that is coming from the fact that he's copy and paste and the fact that those null rays just absolutely stink. So take those two out of there, and if you don't have Starscream, then he's going to be way higher. I'm, I'm definitely going to recommend him for you uh, if you don't have Starscream or if you're a Seeker collector. But if you do have Starscream uh, and you're not a Seeker collector, you can probably pass this guy up. So 
Uh, that's going to wrap up the review. I hope the little bit of the insight that I offered here helps in making a decision. And if you've already made your decision, I hope you found the, uh, the video entertaining and informative. And as always, if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that like button, be sure to subscribe and uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about this mold. Let me know what you think about thrust and um, we can maybe also share some null ray pain together. So uh, with that, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. And until we see you in the next one, take care.